Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. So this actually took a bit of work to get, well, working. Um, the Universe Sandbox wanted to open, then I reinstalled it, and then the Extoria wanted to catch it. So then, like, I reinstalled it again, and then I realized the Extoria actually has an ignore list, and it added Universe Sandbox 2 for some reason. So that's all fixed now. Everything's working wonderfully. And there was an update. To which I've lost the patch notes, or update notes, because I kind of, uh, well, uh, I did kind of have to reinstall like 20 times, so I'm just going to quickly grab those. And here we go. So the big update is that they did add the Trappist 1 system, which has made headlines in pretty much every major news source you could imagine. And no, it's not fake news. NASA did actually discover a solar system that had seven planets, all of which could be habitable around a very cold star very close together. And it actually isn't too far from uh, our solar system. So people were freaking out, getting excited, you know, the things that happen when people realize there may be aliens, quote unquote, close by. I know it was over like 10 light years away. But, you know, that's still close for space, and here we are, Trappist-1. So, as you can see, the sun is actually very, very small, and it is a very cold, so the planets are very close to it. And the habitable zone actually goes very much, most of the planets are within it. Now, some are in the hot side, so let's see how hot this is. It's still only 115 degrees on these inner planets. I'm gonna just put out a little warning. I can't be sure this is accurate and neither can anyone because we can't like close up scan these planets or anything yet. So this is more of just a slight imagination when it comes to this solar system. But as you can see, this one actually has water once again. No way to know if it actually does, but in Universe Sandbox 2 it does. Um, and this one actually has a perfect temperature of 10 degrees. This one here is a bit colder, negative 23, negative 59, and then the very outer one is negative 107. Well, it, it, it's pretty impressive that, now the temperatures we can be pretty accurate about because we can detect how far away they are from their star, so considering that NASA's pretty sure that they found these planets in the Goldilocks zone where they can support life and water. Well, that is pretty amazing, and we'll see if any news comes of it. So let's see if there are any else, uh, any other <laughs> real updates. Uh, let me go check. So, three of the planets are within the good habitable zone, which would be most likely to get new life. The other ones are outside, but still not actually too extreme. Ooh, and they have that button that gives you a full list of what's new. Okay. They also added nearest 400 stars. They fixed graphics for something. Um, hmm. Okay, so that's pretty much everything. So you know how we'll ce uh, celebrate. Uh, we will blow this stuff up because what? What else? You know. And if aliens do live on this planet, I am very sorry. <laughs> Wee. <laughs> Rip. Oh, there is other Universe Sandbox 2 news, actually. They did say that they may actually be making a mobile version soon. Uh. I don't know how that would work, but they said that the mobile controls would work well with the game, so I'll trust them on that. Now, what I really want to try with this game is the VR mode. I don't have an HTC Vive, though, so that that's a little bit more of a 
dream rather than a realistic goal, but maybe at some point we'll get it. Maybe at some point we'll do VR mode, because that would be awesome. Now we're just gonna blow up... Oh! Earth, no! Rip Earth. Neptune will now eat Earth. Or will it? No! It won't. It got very close. You can't escape. You can't escape. <laughs> Wow, you're actually doing a very good job of escaping. Oh, never mind. Look what we have done to this solar system. Oh, that that's Jupiter. Things are going to start getting very bad now, because the Jupiters are actually going to start attracting this star. This star is actually, compared to Jupiter... Um... Let's size it up against Jupiter. Look at how small it is! <laughs> that That's actually crazy small. And there goes Jupiter getting ripped apart. Uh, when it comes to mass though, it's 84 Jupiters in mass. That's still extremely small for a star. Um, still is ripping Jupiter apart though. And yeah, this, this is what's going to happen 100%. Everything's going to explode. Neptunes are going to take over, and um, Earth is just going to plop in. Okay, so, what else can we do with this solar system? Because we've pretty much uh, completely destroyed it. Um, oh, Let's try it out with the supernova, because the star is so small. Oh, look at the spirals going out from Jupiter. Uh, if I turn off... You can actually see it's letting out little spirals. Rest in peace, Jupiter. Oh, what is this? Oh, this is actually one of the Trappist planets, which is being ripped apart really, really, really badly. Like, it's really small now. If we get a moon, it's like a quarter of the moon now. <laughs> okay, so let's find this uh, simulation again. It's somewhere. I don't know if it's in core. Yes, it is. And what we're going to do is we're just going to explode the star. I'm sorry if you hear those that clanking in the background. That's my rabbit messing around with his toys. So, yeah, that's that's not going to go away. Okay, so, Supernova. Uh, let's redo that because that was actually disappointing. I kind of did that a little bit too fast. Let's go, like... In a milliseconds. And here we go. Now we should be able to see it slowly spread. Really? That was quite instant. <laughs> okay, it appears that the supernova starts out really big. So, there's no way to really uh, control that then. So let's just turn up time again so that I can spread, and let's see what happens to these planets. So here's one of the pla oh, it's already been completely destroyed. Hey, how are you doing? You are now just dead. Okay, so I think all of the planets are- oh, this one's at over 100,000 degrees now. Um. Oh, I've never actually seen that before, it's actually pushing them out. I'm not sure if that's new, but I've never actually seen a supernova do that in this game before, actually, like, shoot it out in that direction. But, yeah, that's... that's the end of this solar system. It has been thoroughly destroyed. And... Let's do one other thing, and let's make one of the planets actually look like they have life. Like, I know it has water, but water does not equal uh, life all the time. I mean, it, it makes a better chance. But what I've noticed is this doesn't have an atmosphere. And it also doesn't have green. So we're just going to quickly do that. So if we go to one atmosphere, we put it to one. That'll give it... Ooh, that looks pretty nice, actually. And next up, we're going to... 
Oh, that brings up its temperature quite a bit. Uh-oh. That's not a good thing. Okay. Well, maybe... Oh my god. Uh, uh, well, I'll be right back. My printer's making noises. Okay, back to video. So, we have our beautiful Trappist 1D over here, and it is actually heating up more than we want it to. So we're just going to go over to the... I do and turn this up so that it actually reflects. Reflects a bit of that energy it's getting, and I think that's going to bring it down to about where we want it. Come on, under 20? Okay, I can live with that. That's close enough. So having it at 30% uh, or 0 0.3 is good enough for me. And we're also going to go to the colors on this planet. And we are going to make this look wonderful. So we're going to have... Uh, beach things. Then we'll have like forests. And then we'll have mountains, which are going to be, like, grayish. We're also going to... Shoot, this actually look Oh. That's the wrong thing. That's why it's having weird problems. This is the one we want to change. That actually looks really bad. Let's find a better color for it. Looks kind of like snow. But that looks really lifelike and vibrant like that. So we'll do that. Two shades of green. And then we're going to get rid of a little bit of water so that you can see the coast. And there we go. Here is my artist's rendition of Trappist 1 because I am a certified space artist. Uh, definitely. And that makes a good thumbnail. <laughs> so guys, thank you for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and let's just blow this up to end this. Um. If you uh, like this video and subscribe today, you will actually uh, get a free ticket to the Trappist system once uh, Albright Incorporated Space Travel Agency begins, on top of your normal stay at Spook Vooper, so just keep that in mind. Although you may not want to visit right now, we're having some technical difficulties. <laughs> oh my.